If you're a natural born marketer, you're one lucky son of a gun. If you're like most people, marketing, especially online marketing, is about as appealing as standing in a police lineup. The May Create team of creatives has transformed websites and digital marketing from craptastic to fantastic since 2005. Our podcast, Marketing with Purpose, makes sense of marketing so you can make purposeful decisions instead of carrying on with the same old crap you've been doing. And now your host, Monica Pitts, founder of May Create, with another episode on how to make your marketing not suck. Hello again, this is Monica Pitts. Welcome to Marketing with Purpose. Ironically, the topic of this episode is about what we've learned so far about podcasting. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast, this episode is just for you. We started from scratch and did our research online, spoke to a couple people who have done it before. And with this knowledge, we have plowed forward and learned from other people's mistakes and also learned the hard way. If you are a visual learner and you'd like to read this podcast, you can head on over to podcast.maycreate.com where we have transcriptions of all of our podcasts, also free downloadable resources for you to use to build your business. And last but not least, links to anything that we reference in this podcast. So let's get down to business. This is what I've learned about podcasting so far. It's all about process. And I don't know why that would come as a surprise to me because really everything in business is all about process. When we started out, we thought, well, the process needs to be how we're going to record these things and what type of topics we're going to talk about. And then we realized that it's more than just that. It's about the editing process and what we're going to do with them after we've recorded them and how we're going to launch the podcast, how we're going to learn to more effectively communicate our message all kinds of stuff, right, that I just didn't realize I was going to need to know about beforehand. And a lot of this stuff isn't things that you can go out and find bulleted lists about on other people's blogs. It's things that I'm learning about myself, how I speak, how I interact with other people, and also my conception that, oh, well, after this podcast is made, I can just flip it into a video and or a blog post, you think it's going to be super easy while in fact, if we really, really want to do it well and make it super professional, it just, it takes time. First, I'm going to list out the things that I've learned and then I'll go through each one individually and explain what in the world I mean by them. First thing I learned is that for me, it's easier than video, sort of. Second, editing them takes forever at least right now. Third, podcasts make great recyclable content like blog posts once they're transcribed and edited. Fourth, I learned I use stupid words all the time when maybe I should just be quiet. Fifth, if you read well, reading a script is not always a bad idea, especially if you use all those weird words that I am going to tell you I use. Six, Trying to authentically act out a script is really hard, actually. (laughs) Seven, starting with energy is also difficult. Sometimes starting is difficult if you haven't planned enough before you get started. Number eight, launching correctly has lots of moving parts, way more moving parts than I ever (laughs) thought it would have. And number nine, because I love podcasts so much, I actually felt more nervous about launching my podcast than many other types of media we've endeavored in. So let's start at the top. Podcasting is easier than video, sort of. For me, when I do video, we try to do it authentically without a script. Like I'm giving a presentation to the video, looking directly at the video camera, without being prompted by slides, without having an audience. And that's really hard for me because I like to interact with my audience and see their eyes and understand whether or not they know what I'm saying and are grasping my concept. So in that way, we've made video challenging for me. Now, the way that I operate is on a very audio level. 
I dictate all my blog posts. I talk through all of my projects before I do them. It's like by hearing the words, I can see the project. Things with me start with a conversation, and it's a lot easier for me to learn from a conversation than through watching something or reading it. That's why I went to every class in college. I sat in every class and I never skipped them because that's how I learn is by listening. So it is easier for me to do a podcast than it is for me to be in front of a video camera. There's still a little bit of that nervousness because I am speaking into a microphone and I know people will hear me someday, hopefully, (laughs) Uh, but it's not as bad as being in front of a camera. So in that way, it is easier than video. Now, as far as editing goes, and I'll talk more about editing in a minute, it's easier and it's not easier. You can splice together pieces of audio so seamlessly, way more seamlessly than I thought could ever be done. It actually kind of freaks me out because if you have the right words, you can make anyone say anything. As you're editing it, however, it's hard to see where the words are because you're just looking at sound waves. At this point, (laughs) I can recognize the stupid words that I say in their sound waves because I've taken them out so many times. Now, for editing a video, it's not as easy to splice together those moments of greatness because you have people that move and it feels weird and jumpy and sometimes gives you motion sickness. From a teaching perspective and a speaking perspective, it's not always as easy to communicate what I want to say without a visual. It would be easier for me to explain some of the concepts that we've covered if my listeners could see the picture that I've made describing the topic. In that way, it's not as easy to convey your message as video. I'm not sure right now of the overall time investment per podcast. I know that it's less than per video, but it's still a greater time investment than I thought it would be to get each one of these rolling. I thought about auditing the podcast project and seeing exactly how much time we have recorded per episode. But I feel like at this point, we're so young in it that it's not really accurate. So I'm going to let us settle in a little bit and then see how much time it actually takes us to make each one. Speaking of time, my number two, editing them takes forever, at least right now. (laughs) I went through a few softwares before I just decided to edit them using Audacity. I started out in Audition because it's such a robust software and there's actually so much documentation on it and support, especially on YouTube, to teach you how to use it. And I'm finding right now that I don't know what can be done and so I'm pushing those limits right now with myself to see how to make it easier and better to edit. But the user interface in Audition was not something that was very natural for me, and so it took me a really long time to edit things in there. I also tried out a software on my cell phone. It's an app, Lexus Audio Editor, and it works pretty good. I mean, the interface was easy to use, and it felt pretty natural for me. It is weird getting the files everywhere they're supposed to go before and after, But it did make it so I can edit my podcasts while I'm waiting for my girls to get done with their dance class. So multitasking was great using this. I fought for a really long time to figure out how to record on two tracks because we often have two speakers. And I don't have a mixing board. We chose USB mics. And so I'm having a really difficult time recording on two tracks. And I now, after editing so many of these podcasts, do understand the value of recording on multiple tracks. There's times where Katie's saying something super inspirational and I'm over here making loud noises. Like, what am I doing? And I just want to like tell myself to be quiet, but I can't edit myself out because we're in the same audio track. For the time being, we're just going to start recording on two different devices for a while until we get a mixing board. One trick to cut down on editing time is editing as you go. Like if you hate what you just said, just delete it right then and there. That takes developing an awareness of listening to yourself speak, asking yourself, is this clearly represented? Is this how I want to say it? And that's not always easy. 
It's just in the long run, it takes longer to edit than it does to re-record. Some people talk about clapping before and after so that you can edit into the future. And I can see where that would be really helpful, especially as we start recording on two different devices. However, right now, just recording on one device, we just I just delete it as we go. And that saves me a lot of time in the long run. It makes the editing process more efficient because I'm working with a better quality recording from a content perspective. Number three, podcasts make great blog posts when transcribed. I feel like podcasting makes recycling content easy because I can take old blog posts that I spent a lot of time researching and writing and make them into podcasts. And I can also make a podcast and then transcribe it and edit it into a blog post. I'm not sure which way is actually better. I kind of like the authenticity of the conversation flushing out the podcast as the information comes naturally from someone, while on the other hand, I love the organization that a pre-written piece brings to a podcast. All about the planning, right? So even if you're going to have this authentic conversation with your audience through your podcast, it's important that you plan it. I'm saying you, what what I'm trying to say to myself is I need to plan more, right? And saying it out loud makes me accountable. I am surprised how much editing it takes to bring a authentically recorded podcast into an article, into a blog post. Because a lot of the times I'm recording with more than one person and will tell a story And then when you're in a blog post, it's not coming across quite right, especially when Katie and I record because we finish each other's sentences. So (laughs) the transcription software is like, what is going on here? Who is this person talking even? But even with that, it's a great spot to start recycling content and sharing with a broader audience because not everybody listens to podcasts. Not everybody is on social media. Not everybody is searching for the content that you have to offer right now. When you recycle content, you spread it across more mediums and allow more people to find what they need when they need it. Number four, so much self-awareness built (laughs) through this podcasting process. I use stupid words all the time when maybe I should just be quiet. I say things like, like, (laughs) actually, literally, basically, yes, exactly that. I even stutter, and so does Katie. When we're thinking, we say the same word on repeat. And the other thing that I'm going to work so hard on when I podcast with other people, when they say something amazing, I don't have to give a loud and enthusiastic affirmative noise. I don't have to say, exactly, or yes, or I agree with you. In conversation, that is totally normal. But when it comes through, recorded, it sounds like I'm interrupting them. And it's hard to hear what they have to say when I'm talking at the same time. I am going to learn to be quiet. (laughs) I'm laughing because it's so hard. (laughs) Okay, number five. If you read well, reading a script isn't always bad. As I said before, when we're recycling our content, sometimes we're recycling it from blog posts that have already been made or presentations I've already given. And other times, We are starting a podcast from scratch, and we will recycle the content in the podcast into other mediums. I was really hesitant at first to read anything. I didn't want the podcast to sound boring and unconversational. Then I read an article that I had recently written and recorded it as a podcast. And I was nervous. I didn't even listen to it because I was very nervous that it was going to sound like I was just reading a terrible (laughs) monotone book. And what was really exciting is my staff members, they edited it for me. And they said it's they didn't even know. They didn't even know that I had read it. So that means that all those books that I've been reading to my children and all the audiobooks I've been listening to may actually be wearing off on me and I might be able to read aloud successfully now. If you are a person that can read aloud well and you're not a person who does a good job speaking without all those weird words that I said earlier or umming every five seconds, reading a script 
is not a bad idea. And I don't know how many other podcasters read scripts regularly or articles that they've written for their podcasts, but I think I would be surprised by how many do. Number six, speaking of scripts, trying to authentically act out a script is hard. Mad props to actors. (laughs) So when we were recording our intro and outro, I asked one of my friends to do it who is an actor. I felt like a crazy person as an art director. I've art directed all kinds of things from videos to photo shoots, websites, banner ads, (laughs) trade show booths, you name it. Like I've art directed so many things, but I haven't art directed delivery of audio except for on video. And on video, you have the visual to distract you from things. And I was so proud of him for sticking with it and finding our voice because it wasn't easy for him to like channel May Create's voice and get it out in this script that he had not written. But he did such a great job. So thank you so much, Dave, for your hard work on this. And then when Katie and I were recording our promo for our launch giveaway, We had to record it like, I don't even know, 10, 15 times before we got it to a spot where we thought it was good. And what's crazy is when we finally recorded it and thought it was good, it was because we threw away the script. Like we knew what we were supposed to say. We had said it so many times. We basically had it memorized and then we just talked back and forth the way we normally would and it came out much closer to what we wanted it to be. So acting out a script is actually really difficult. (laughs) Number seven, starting with energy is difficult. Sometimes starting is just difficult without a script. And we just talked about how scripting is not always super easy. However, one of the things that bugs me about some podcasts is it takes them forever to get into the meat of the conversation, the things that I want to know. Sometimes it's seven, ten 15 minutes before we even get into the thing that they told me that they were going to talk about. That bugs the crap out of me. However, now I understand how it happens (laughs) because you get started. You might not have a clear description of exactly what you're going to say. You might not be following a script right in front of you, or you might need to tell people things that they really need to know before they start listening. So I forgive now, those podcasts for keeping me waiting for 10 minutes before they tell me what I wanted to know or even get started telling me. However, I feel like with planning, I can do better. Number eight, launching correctly has lots of moving parts. I thought we were going to record stuff. It was going to be fun. (laughs) We were going to give it to people to listen to. I hadn't even considered the amount of things that needed to happen to launch a podcast correctly. So I read a lot of articles. We sat in on a couple of talks about it. And (laughs) Isabella did a metric ton of research, quite frankly. She has a whole multi-page document about everything that she considered. And I, I tasked Isabella and Jason, my online marketing team, with developing a strategy that we could discuss and review because there were so many pieces that I thought to myself, wow, this is not something that I can task myself with. I'll never get it done. And then the podcast will never launch. Things that they included in this launch strategy are social media. We had to set up our website. We had to design the main podcast page. We had to design the individual um, single podcast page. We had to code it all and get it all to work together. You just set up your podcast hosting. You have to get all the RSS feeds set up to feed into the hosting And then they decided that we were going to do this launch giveaway. We had to decide what we were going to give away and what our budget was and record all of the promos for it and then add the promos into these already finished podcasts. So there were – and there's more things too that I just am not listing off the top of my head. But I was just really surprised. It really is launching a marketing campaign. And in my optimistic world of uneducated oblivion – I didn't know. Fortunately, I knew what I didn't know, and I had team members who were willing to put in the work to make sure that we got started off on the right foot. And number nine, because I love podcasts so much, I felt more nervous about launching a podcast than I have 
many other types of media we've launched. I think it's because I want it to be good. I love the podcasts that I listen to. I learn so much from them. And I want to give back in the same way to my audience that they give to me every time I turn on a podcast and listen and get my head on straight or learn an answer to a question I've had forever. And also, I'm sharing my opinions. And People might not agree with me. There could be other marketers listening to my podcast that are just shaking their heads. And I really want people to like me and agree with me. I know this about myself. However, I also feel like there's a lot of people who aren't marketers that have maybe never heard it before or maybe heard it this way before. And I can help them by sharing the things that I've learned over the past 20 years about marketing. So it's from a position of servitude that we launched this podcast. And because of that servitude, I also felt very nervous about making sure that the end product was as good as it could be. I fully realize that this podcast is nowhere near perfect and not nearly as professional as it will be someday as we continue to record episode after episode and learn how to polish and get this as good as it can possibly be. Just before we launched, like a week before we launched, I looked at Isabella and I said, I feel like having recorded so many more episodes now, I just need to go back to the ones that I initially recorded and do them all over again. And she said, Monica, no, like stop. You're being a perfectionist. These are going to go out. People are going to love them. And really, you've got no place to go but up. You can get better with every episode. And we don't need to beat ourselves up for everything that we didn't know at the very beginning. And that's why I made this podcast. Because you can learn from my own revelations and mistakes. Once again, the things I learned is that it's all about process. It's in the planning. The more you plan, the better it's going to be on the end. And it's difficult to know what all that planning is from the beginning. So just like Isabella did for me, give yourself a pep talk and forgive yourself for the things that you didn't know to begin with and just resolve to make them better on the other end. For me, podcasting is easier than video, sort of. Two, editing. (laughs) Well, it's taking me forever, at least right now. I'm getting better though. Number three, podcasts make great blog posts when you transcribe them. Just make sure that you realize you're going to be editing maybe a little bit more than you thought. Number four, I use stupid words all the time when maybe I should just be quiet. Number five, if you read well, reading a script is actually not a bad thing. Number six, trying to authentically act out a script is more difficult than you think. Number seven, starting with energy is hard. Starting sometimes is hard without a plan, without a script. So make sure that you get your plan and your script together before you start to make sure that you efficiently introduce your topic and get to business. Number eight, launching correctly has lots of moving parts and there's tons of references out there for you to tell you ideas on how to make your launch great. And number nine, because I love podcasts so much, I actually felt more nervous about launching a podcast than doing other types of media. I hope that sharing my opinions, trials, and tribulations as a marketer and business owner can help other people more effectively run their businesses and market them to grow and find success. Once again, if you are a visual person and you want the transcription or links to any of the things that I mentioned in this podcast, please head on over to podcast.maycreate.com. You'll get a full transcription, links to all the resources. We also have a resources section on our site and a fully functioning blog. You can sign up to get email newsletters or download free resources to help you grow your business. Now, get out of here. I know you've got things to do. Your business is not going to market itself. Thanks again for listening to Marketing with Purpose. Head over to maycreate.com M-A-Y-E-C-R-E-A-T-E dot com. Yeah, you heard me right. M-A-Y-E create dot com for podcast notes and more resources to grow your business. Don't let your marketing suck. Get your pride on market with purpose.